Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Catherine Rockies podcast. We are so glad you're here today. We pray that the Lord meets you at the very point of your need. Let's pray. God, we commit this podcast into your hands. Have your way, O Lord. Holy Spirit, take control. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, today we're going to be looking at the story of King Asa. This story can be found in Second Chronicles chapter 14, 15, and 16. We are going to read all, we are not going to read all the chapters but I, because of time, but I encourage you to read the three chapters whenever you can. That is Second Chronicles chapter 14, chapter 15, and 16. That's where the uh, story we are talking about today can be found. The story about King Asa. So, we're going to start in chapter 14, Second Chronicles chapter 14. So, I'm starting to read from verse 1. So, Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judiah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judiah the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him. So Asa, king of Judea, he took over the reign from his fathers after his uh, father uh, slept with uh, his father passed on. He took away. He he took over the reign, and he the Bible says that he did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Okay. Let's go down to verse 7. Therefore he said unto Judea, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he had given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. So in the, f- we see that Asa, first of all, he sought the Lord. He did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord, and God gave him rest on every side. Because he did what was good in the sight of God, he gave him rest on every side, and he built and he prospered. So let's go down to chapter 9, to verse 9. And there came out against them Syria and Ethiopia with an host of a thousand, thousand and three hundred chariots, and came unto Merisha. It says a thousand thousand hosts. I want to see that in another um, translation. Let's see uh, what it says. That's Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 9. 
It says, I'm reading from NIV. Sarah and Cushit marched out against them with an army of thousands upon thousands and 300 chariots. That means uncountable, uncountable number of armies came against Judiah during the time of the reign of King Asa. So what happened? If we go down to when this host of army, thousands of a thousand uncountable armies came against Judiah, it says in verse 11, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So let's look at the progression. When he took over the reign of Judea, he did that was that which was he did that which was good in the sight of God, and God gave him rest. Says God gave him rest on every side. He built, he prospered. And then during his reign, there was an attack on the on uh, Judea, and he called upon the name of the Lord his God, and he he said, God, uh, we need help. We have this multitude. Of, of army coming against us. What are we going to do? We need help. And we look at 13, verse 13. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerea, and the Ethiopians were overthrown. And they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host. And they carried away very much spot. So, Asa called upon the name of the Lord and said, God, help us. We, we need help. And God showed up. God showed up and, and delivered them out of the hands of their enemy. So, let's go down to that's chapter uh, 14. We're seeing the story of King Asa, he started very well. He started so good. He he well, he did with that which was good in this in the in the eyes of the Lord. He sought the Lord, and God gave him um, rest on every side. He built, he prospered. As long as he sought the Lord, he was prosperous. He was winning his battles. There was peace in the land. Everything was going so well. So let's go down to chapter 15. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judea and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Um, when, they, when they in their trouble, they turned unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him. He was found of them. So during this season, the um, the word of the Lord came on to, upon Azariah, uh, the son of Ojin, and he had a message for Asa. He went and told Asa, Asa, God is saying that if you seek me, you will find me. 
But if you forsake me, I will forsake you. So this, I believe this was like a warning to to um, Asa because uh, God knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. So he was telling Asa, as long as you seek me, as long as you stick with me, as long as you do what is good and right in my sight, as long as you continue with how you started, I will surely be with you. But if you forsake me, I will forsake you. So let's go down to verse 8, 15 and 8. And when Asa had this word and the prophecy of Erdel the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the city which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the pouch of the Lord. Then if you go down to 12, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their father with all their heart and with all their soul, that who, whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or good, great, whether man or woman. And they swore unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpet and with cornets, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath. For they have sworn with all their hearts, and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. So Asa started very well. He, he, he did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord. He sought the Lord, and he was found of God. God. God showed up for him. And when he had um, enemies come against him, he says, sought the Lord, he asked God for help, and God showed up and delivered him. And if you look at um, chapter um, 3 of 15, um, chapter 15 of Second Chronicle fifteen three. For a season during his reign, there was a falling away. There was a falling away because he said in three. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching praise and without law. And when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found of them. So when um, the message came to Asa that um, by Azariah, the son of Odin, he told him, Look, the Lord is with you. Why ye be with him? If you seek him, he will be found of you, him. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. So when Asa had that, he took courage. He took away the idols. They repented and they, they turned again to the Lord. And once they turned to the Lord, they said in 15, And all Judea rejoiced at the oath, for they have sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. So when you seek the Lord, you're found of him. And the Lord gives you rest so that is that i believe that applies to us because god is the same yesterday today and forevermore jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forevermore god does not change he's the same ever the same way um asa and the whole of judea saw the lord and they were found of him the same message that he sent to Asa through Azariah still applies to us today. He said, The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. 
um, in Revelation, we see our Lord Jesus Christ saying, I'm at the door, I'm knocking, knocking at the door. If you hear my voice and open up the door, that he will enter. God is not a tax master. He's standing, he's, um, he's knocking, he's seeking us, but he's not going to force himself, he, himself on us. And if we seek him, we'll, he will be found of us. But if we forsake him, the Bible says he will forsake us too. So I pray that God will give us the grace to um, always seek the Lord. Always seek the Lord. And we're so glad we have a, a better covenant uh, with the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can um, ask for forgiveness of sin anytime we... we um, miss a step or we fall away or we feel that anytime we sin we can always ask for forgiveness he said he's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so the blood of jesus christ can take care of any sin so if we have any sin in our hearts or we if we get caught up in sin, we always have to make sure that we we stop and seek the Lord and ask ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. We have forsake the sin and ask for forgiveness. And he said once we do that he, he we will be found of him. He 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 is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to all um all unrighteousness so that that was what Asa and the people of Judea did once they fell away they sought the Lord and the Bible says he was found of them so in um if we go down um 15 and 19 after he says they saw the Lord and they were, he was found on the and there was no more war unto the 5 and 30 year of the reign of Asa so once they were in the will of God once they were uh, doing the will of God uh, what God has asked them to do there was no more war um, in in, uh, in Judea at that time so let's go down to Chapter 16, verse 1. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Basha, king of Israel. I'm sorry. Chapter one, chapter 16, verse 1. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judea and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa king of Judea. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king, king's house and sent it to Ben-Hadad king of Syria that dwelt in Damascus saying, There is a leash between me and thee. As there was between my father and thy, and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break the liege with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Behadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ijon and Dan and Abinel and all the store cities of Naphtal. And it came to pass when Basha had it that he left the building of Ramah and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judea and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof. Wherefore Basha was building, and he built there with Gaba and Mapha. 
so what is happening in chapter 16 from 1 to 6 um, the king of Israel came against Asa and instead of Asa asking God for help like he usually did we see in 14 when the Ethiopians came against him and the uh, Judea he he asked the Lord he sought the Lord for help and um, the Lord showed up and gave him victory but this time when the king of Israel came against Asa and Judea he did not seek the Lord he did not ask God for help rather he asked um, he asked um, he asked the king of Syria uh, for help and and this and he asked for help from the king of Syria instead of asking the help, asking help from the Lord his God and um, we see in 7 and at that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judea and said unto him because thou had relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand we are not the Ethiopians and the Lubins a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen yet because thou didst rely on the Lord he delivered them unto thy hand for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Hearing thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wrought with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a, in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some people the same time. So what is going on here? Asa started really good. He did what was good in the eyes of God. God gave him rest round about. When he had um, the Ethiopians come against him, the Lord uh, with a... Uh, oh, uncountable armies God gave him victory and when there was a falling away um, in, in the in the country God in Judea God and they asked God for forgiveness and they repented and they saw the Lord he was found of them but for some reason when the king of Israel came against Judea instead of him to seek the Lord he sought help from the um from the king of Syria. But still the Lord still had mercy. The Lord was still is, is very merciful. He still sent him um he sent him a message through a seer and said, This thing you did um was foolish. It's a foolish thing. Didn't I deliver you uh the last time you called upon me? Why would you uh rely on a human being to help you instead of relying on me? He said um, in 9 for, uh, the Lord said for the eyes of the Lord um, this year said um, Hanen this year said for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who whose heart is perfect towards him so he got this message and instead of him to repent he was angry with the seer for giving him the message and he put him in prison. So let's see uh, what happened uh, in um, 16. Let's go down to 10 to 11. And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last law, they are written, they are written in the book of the king of Judea and Israel. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased to his feet until his disease was exceedingly great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, 
but to the physician. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Wow. Um, Asa started so well. He did what was good in the sight of God. He saw the Lord. He was found of him. But for some reason, in chapter 16, even when there was a falling away in 15, he he got a message from a a prophet, and uh, he and all of Judah, they repented, and the Lord uh, showed up for them, and they did not see war in Judah for a very long time. But for some reason, in 16, he... When the king of Israel came against him, instead of um, seeking the Lord for help, he sought the king of um, Syria uh, for help. And God was still merciful unto him. He said he sent him a message through um, a a seer, Hannah, and said, Asa, this thing you did is is really wrong. Didn't the Lord deliver you the first time? Why are you seeking man uh, for help? You know, the scripture says, says, this woe is man that trusts a man and make arm his flesh. So, uh, dependency should be on the Lord, not on man. So that is what the message that the seer brought to him. And instead of him to repent, he just put the um, the seer in jail in, in anger. He was angry and he put the, uh, the seer in, in jail. So after he did that, he also became sick. And instead of seeking the Lord... He did not seek the Lord. He did not seek the Lord uh, about his sickness. But he sought the physicians. It's not. It's not it's, there's nothing wrong with seeking our physicians uh, for help. Or first seek the Lord so that seek the Lord that He will show you how um, He wants to heal you. Yes, God uses physicians to heal. He can heal you by himself. By his stripes we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, Jesus paid for our sicknesses, our diseases. That's why I say that that I'm glad we have um, a better confidence than than they, they had. The new covenant that we have, that Christ came and died for our sins, that, so that by His stripes we are healed. But what he's talking about here, basically, is that he did not seek the Lord. He did not ask God. He depended on our physicians instead of depending on God. And the last thing we heard about him was that he passed on. So um, the lesson we... Um, we uh what we take away from this story is first of all that when we do the right thing because the first lesson is he started so good he did what was good in the uh, right in the sight of god and god gave him rest round about he built he was prosperous because he was doing what was good in the sight of god and when he found himself in trouble, he called upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord showed up and and um, and helped him. He asked the Lord to help him. He helped him. But when he stopped seeking the Lord, um, that was um, basically the end of the story for him. We didn't see anything um, anything uh, significant again out of. Um, his life when he's after he stopped seeking the Lord. So this is a lesson for us today that um, to seek the Lord in everything. The Bible says we should ask and it shall be given unto us. Seek and we shall find knock and the door will be opened unto us. 
so and if we look at um, the scripture if we look at um, the scriptures it says in uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works so everything that is written in the scripture is to help us to encourage us To encourage us and to teach us um, the right way um, to go, and um, and the Bible also says in um, the Bible also says in in Jeremiah seventeen seven. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted the man. And make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. So, if someone trusts in another person, he say, "Cause the is the person is say the person." The Lord is saying in Jeremiah five seventeen five. Let me read it again. Thus said the Lord, "Cause be the man that trusted in man." And make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. So we should make sure that we don't trust man for anything, that all our trust is in the Lord at all times. Because with God, all things are possible. It's not that God, God can use anybody to do anything that He wants to do. But we have to make sure that we are trusting God. To do it the way he wants to do it. To deliver us the way he wants to deliver us. Not to trust a man. God can use anybody to help us out of any situation. Or to heal us. But we have to make sure that we are trusting God. And asking God for help for everything. We trust him and we do what he tells us to do. We trust him and he shows us what to do. And we also have to remember that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are the higher ways and his thoughts are the higher thoughts. And finally, we um, I want to read... The Bible says in James one twenty two, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So we should be doers of the word, not hearers only. We should be doers of the word, not hearers only. Because when we are hearers only, we deceive ourselves. But I want us to read that chapter. It's um, James... One twenty two. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. If you go down to 25, it says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bred, and bred it not his tongue, but deceived his own heart, that man's religion is, vain, is in vain. Okay, 25. I wanted to read 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So when we are a doer of the word of God, we are blessed. Um, I want to read that uh, James one twenty two in um, NIV. It says one one um one twenty five but whoso who, but whoever looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, 
But doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So we are blessed in what we do. So my prayer today is that the Lord will give us the grace to be doers of the word and not hearers only. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also I want to invite you today, if you have not met Jesus Christ, um, your Lord and Savior, and that is where where everything starts. So if you have not um, been born again before, I ask you to um, pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you today. I ask you, O Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. I confess and forsake my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary and he resurrected after three days. I pray that Jesus come into my heart and live. Be my Lord and my Savior. I receive you now and I believe I am born again. Thank you, Lord. If you pray that prayer, I believe you're born again. And um, welcome to the family. And uh, um, look for um, a Bible-believing church and start attending and uh, listen to the Word. Um, listen to the Word of God and uh, and ask God to give you. And, and we're going to pray for God to give us the grace to not be only hearers but doers of the world so let us pray father we ask you lord god to give us the grace to be doers of the world not hearers only um help us O lord fill us with your spirit give us um fill us afresh with your holy spirit help us to um hear your word understand it and do what you have told us to do thank you lord in jesus name amen thank you so much for listening to our podcast today and hope to see you soon god bless thank you